In this video, we're going to take a look at graph isomorphisms. Before we jump straight into the definition, I just want to look at an example that might help us to understand exactly what an isomorphism is. So I want to know how many graphs exist with n vertices where the vertices are labeled. So if I have just one vertex, A, I have just one graph. I have the graph of A. I can't connect it to anything else because there's one vertex. If I have two vertices, A, B, I can either choose to connect A and B, or I can choose to not connect A and B. So I have two graphs. So I have one and I have two. And then for three vertices, A, B, C, I can either not connect any of them, I can connect A and B, I can connect B and C, I can connect A and C, or I can connect two of them. So A, B, C, I can connect A, B, and B, C. These are horrible graphs, I apologize. I connect B, C, and C, A. Oops, I'm trying to keep these in the correct order just so that it's easier to understand. Or I can connect A, B, and A, C. And then, of course, I can choose to connect all three of these. So I have eight, eight different ways. Now, we could talk about the generalization of how many different labeled graphs are there, but that's not really the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise is to say, yes, there's one, there's two, there's eight, but let's look specifically at these three vertices. What if I decided to take away the labels? How would that change things? Well, I would have this graph, ABC, and it doesn't matter whether these are labeled or not. But if you'll take a look in this section of three, this is really, if I'm taking away the labels, do you see how these three are the same? I have three vertices and I have just one edge. And I have two vertices of degree one and one vertice of degree zero. And that's the same for all three of those graphs. These graphs are considered isomorphic. And we'll talk on the next slide about exactly what that means. But essentially it means same number of edges, same number of you know, vertices, same degree, same structure. Again, looking at this next set of three, if I take away all of those labels, do we see that these are all the same as well? I've got one vertice of degree one, one of degree two, and another one of degree one. And that's the same for all three of these. I have three vertices, I have two edges, and I have the same degree structure. So again, those three are all isomorphic. Now, if I look at the last one, obviously it doesn't matter whether it has labels or not, I have three vertices and three edges. So really now I only have four different kinds. So again, this brings us to an isomorphism. The mathy definition says let G1 be a set of vertices and edges and Z, G2 be another set of vertices and edges. G1 is isomorphic to G2 and this is the notation that we use. If and only if there exists some function from V1 to V2, so V1 to V2 meaning I'm mapping uh, vertices to vertices, where that function is bijective, one to one and onto, and for all A and B in V1, so for all of the vertices in V1, an edge exists in E1 if and only if the corresponding edge, F of A and F of B exist in E2. So again, that really doesn't make a lot of sense because there's a lot of mathy language. So let's just instead of looking at the mathy definition, let's just think about what I'm saying. We have two graphs that are isomorphic if they have the same exact structural properties, which means they have the same number of vertices, 
the same number of edges, the same degree of each vertice, and so on. So let's look at an example together to make sure this makes sense. We're going to start with a very simple example. So if you'll notice, I have two graphs. Each graph has four vertices and two edges. So, so far it's feasible that they are isomorphic. The next thing I check is, do they have the same degree structure? Well, each vertex in each of those graphs has a degree of one. So again, simple example, so far so good. Now the question is, based on that, are they isomorphic? One way to look at this is, can I take my second graph, my H graph, and can I simply redraw it so that the vertices are not labeled A, B, C, D, but are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4? And so that the incidence um, for the edges is the same. So here I've got this edge incident to 1 and 2. So if I create, or if I say that A is 1, then I'm going to use 2 here because obviously in my initial graph, 1 and two are adjacent. And so in my isomorphic graph, one and two should be adjacent. So again, before I finish that, which obviously you can see where I'm going with this, think about the definition for an isomorphism, said we're going to have some function that takes each of the vertices in my initial graph and maps it to a vertex in my um, second graph and if we can do that, that preserves everything, then it's isomorphic. So what I've just said is that A is going to map, I'm sorry, one is going to map to A. And that two is going to map to D. And then again, I can put three right here. Well, three is adjacent to four. So I'm going to put three and four. So again, three is going to map to C and four is going to map to B. Now the question is, did I preserve the adjacency? And of course, because I took the original graph and I just relabeled, I know that the adjacency is preserved. Now you're not always going to want to do it that way, um, but I do want to point out that another way to check that we've done everything correctly is to look at those adjacency matrices um, that we learned in our last video. So again, looking at the adjacency matrix for my first graph G, and I am going to use the labels here just to make sure everything's clear. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. In my original graph G, one is adjacent only to two. So one is adjacent to two, and two, oops, is only adjacent to one. Three is adjacent to four, and four is adjacent to three. So now I'm going to look at the adjacency matrix for H. So I'm gonna get rid of some of these markings so that it's clear. So I'm looking at H, the original H. Now when I'm doing my adjacency matrix for H, it's important that I use this order. So I'm going to use A, D, C, B, a, D, C, B. So in my graph, A is adjacent to D, and D is adjacent to A, and B is adjacent, I'm sorry, C is adjacent to B, oops, B is over here, and B is adjacent to C. And so what exactly, what's the purpose of this? Well, if you'll notice, this matrix is exactly the same as this matrix. And again, the important thing here is that we used the same order. So what we have shown is not only did we have the same number of edges, the same number of vertices, the same degree structure, but we've also preserved which vertex was adjacent to which other vertex. Before we go any further into this, I did want to give you a chance to do one practice on your own. So if you would, press pause and see if you can determine if G and H are isomorphic. When you are done, press play to see how you did. 
So again, the first thing I would do is note that there are four vertices in each and four edges in each. So it's possible that these are isomorphic. The next thing I would do is look at the degree structure. This has a degree of two and two and two and two. This has a degree of one. So right away I can stop and say, no, these are not isomorphic because again, the degree structure is not the same. The degree structure for G is that each vertex has a degree of two. For H, I've got a degree one, a degree two, a degree two, and a degree three. So no, not isomorphic. Tell why or why not, the degree structure is not the same. So we have talked about how to determine if two graphs are isomorphic, but we haven't talked about something called the graph isomorphism theorem. Unfortunately, your textbook does not talk about this theorem either, which is unfortunate, um, but it's really a lot of the same things that we've already looked at um, that may be presented in a different way. So obviously the first thing we're going to look at is G and H have the same number of edges and the same number of vertices. Well, if you'll notice, I'm using the same G and H from our last example where we already determined that G and H were not isomorphic. We should find that again. So G and H, yes, they do have the same number of edges and the same number of vertices. That's where we always start. The second thing to do is to look at the degree sequence structure. And we haven't done this, but we have looked at the degrees. So this is just another way to look at the degree of each. So this has a degree of two and two and two and two, and this has a degree of one and three and two and two. So the degree sequence structure says that the degree sequence for G is there are zero vertices of degree zero, zero of degree one, four of degree two, and everything else would be zeros. Whereas the degree structure for H would be zero of degree one, one, I'm sorry, zero of degree zero, one of degree one, two of degree two, one of degree three, and then the rest would be zeros. So again, this is what we would compare. And if these two were exactly the same, we would say, okay, they could be isomorphic, but obviously these are not the same. So this is where we could stop and say that G is not isomorphic to H. If the first two boxes were checked, we would look at the third thing that we should look at, which is they have the same cycle structure. So if I look at G, I can see that the cycle, which means starting at one vertex and ending back at that vertex, G has a four cycle because there are four vertices in the cycle. Whereas if I look at H, H has a one, two, three cycle. And therefore, again, these are not isomorphic. What we're going to look at next is Euler paths and circuits.